Hello, I'm having lots of issues today with video um, voice, so hopefully this one will work. I've, I've done this also a few times. Um, we are in 7.3. 7.1, we looked at the uniform distribution, and it's probably, I think, the easiest of the continuous distributions. It was just a nice line, right, from A to B, whose area under the curve was one. He's easy to integrate. You wouldn't even have to. You could just look at areas under rectangles. In 7.2, we looked at the normal curve, which, again, you just integrate to find probabilities, but his probability density function is not near as nice as the uniform. It had the square root of 2 pi in it, and e to the negative x squared, which doesn't have a closed form, an, an, closed form antiderivative, so that was the issue with the normal, but again, you can still work on it by integrating or with tables. In 7.3, we're looking at our third popular continuous random variable called an exponential random variable. I gave you the section 7.3 actually kind of led you through to discover things about the exponential, and here are the solutions to the problems that were asked on the 7.3 lecture. The main thing I want you to notice is here is the probability density function for an exponential random variable. Lambda is the parameter. Lambda is always uh, a positive value. And uh, this guy, as I'm showing in the next few problems, will always, this guy always integrates to 1 over its support, and its support is bigger than or equal to 0. And also, uh, he has a mean that is always 1 over lambda. He has a standard deviation, always 1 over lambda. He's a very friendly, in my mind, ex uh, has a friendly probability density function. He's easy to integrate. And he has a really neat property called the memoryless property, which uh, we'll get to in a moment. You've heard about memoryless back in the discrete random variables when we did the, remember which one? Geometric. Uh, so that will come up in the second or third page of this. The, the big thing to know right now, this guy, this is an exponential. He'll always take on this form. Lambda is the parameter. He integrates the one. He's legal. He's always positive. Okay, so let's move down here. I'm just showing you here that he's legal. Right here, I'm just finding his mean and variance. So uh, instead of a sum, I'm doing an integral of f times x over support. And here you see the mean, or the expected value, is always 1 over the parameter lambda. And here's the variance, uh, 1 over the parameter, parameter squared. So standard deviation would be the square root of that. Um, down here I'm showing you it has a very nice uh, probability or cumulative distribution function. So in general, if you have uh, if f of x is uh, lambda e the negative lambda x. Sorry about that. Um, its CDF will always be 1 minus e to the negative lambda x. So instead of integrating, if I asked you, you know, what's the probability the random t value takes on a value less than 3, you can always integrate from 0 to 3 f of x dx. Or you could just stick 3 into the, for x, into your cumulative distribution function. So again, nice, very nice closed form, capital F. And there's another function, uh, the exponential use quite heavily in reliability theory. And in reliability, we care about uh, the random variable surviving past a given time instead of failing before. You know, 4, we're asking what's the probability it lives beyond 4. Since this is the, uh, what do you want to say, complement of the CDF, uh, we actually have a very nice formula for S of S. S of X, we call it the survivor function here. So all I'm going to do is subtract 1 minus my capital F, and you see I get a very nice formula for the survivor function. So where this is the density function, this will always be the form of the CDF, and then there's another function called the survivor function, which is just 1 minus that, which would give us e to the negative lambda x. So again, if I ask you what's the probability, you know, you have a, a random variable, an exponential, and it survives past 4 hours, you could just stick 4 
and for x. So, but again, if you integrate with your little f, you'll get the same answer. It's just nice that these are so tidy and easy. Um, let's go ahead on to the next page. Um, I'm just doing an example here. Uh, length of phone calls is another nice one for an exponential. Length of phone calls can be described by an exponential with a mean of 10 minutes. Remember, the mean is the reciprocal of the parameter. So if your mean, if your expected value is 10 minutes, then your parameter must be 1 over 10. And you can see now I built my uh, probability density function is just lambda e to the negative lambda x. For x is positive, this guy will integrate to 1. He's legal. Uh, if I want to find the probability that the random variable lasts more than 12 minutes, I can integrate, you can see over here, from 12 to infinity of my probability density function, or I can just use the survivor function, which is putting 12, you know, into e to the negative lambda x. So again, if you know the survivor, you, instead of doing the integration every time, just plug your value in for x. Um, and the nice, the nice property of the exponential comes out in this problem. Um, suppose that you arrive uh, at the phone booth. Uh, what's the problem? You're going to have to wait more than 22 minutes, given you've already waited more than 10 minutes. What the memory list is, it means it actually it resets itself. Uh, after 10 minutes, the probability that you're going to have to wait more than 22 minutes is really just the probability you're going to have to wait more than 12 minutes, as if once you've waited 10 minutes, the, cl the time clock starts again. The, the exponential does not remember that you've already been there for 10 minutes. This is the only continuous random variable with this property. Um, and partly you can see why it's happening. Um, this I'm just using the conditional definition, probably A given B. Um, I'm writing it as you've seen in previous chapters because bigger than 22 and bigger than 10 is bigger than 22. I'm using the survivor function of the exponential here and here. And you see when you cancel these, you just get e to the negative 1.2, which is really just the probability that x is bigger than 12 in this example. So you see, it, it doesn't matter. I've already waited 10 minutes. At 10 minutes, I'm saying, what's the probability I'm going to have to wait an additional 12 minutes to get to 22? It Again, the time clock clock starts starts fresh and that's that's very strange I mean for a lot of distributions and and I caution you a lot of people like to use the exponential to model situations but not many situations in life are truly memoryless so I mean human life is not memoryless what's the probability you're gonna live 22 years given you've already lived 10 years that 10 years is gonna show on you uh, especially when you get older I can tell you that much so um, yeah, this, this function is special. You don't want to model everything with it. But here's the memory list just to tell you what it looks like in uh, conditional probability terms. What's the probability the random variable lasts more than s plus t units given it's lasted more than s? It's really just saying to get from s to s plus t is an additional t minutes, and so these are equivalent. But again, only for the exponential. This is not, this property does not hold for the normal. It doesn't hold for the uniform. Uh, so if you're going to use this property, make sure you do have an exponential. And even if you go back to first principles and, and use the definition with conditional, you're going to get the right answer. So if you're afraid, oh, do I have an exponential? Do I not? When do I use this? Always going back, the first principles will give you the same answer. So don't, don't fear. It's just a nice way to check in the end that, you know, if you, if you do have an exponential, these, this, this property will hold true. I think I'll make one more video of this because, uh, and I'm just showing you why the exponential, why we get the memory less property to hold. Um, there's a really nice relationship between the Poisson and exponential, and I'll explore that in another video. Okay, I think that will be the last for today. Let me know also if I am talking too fast. I feel like when I ruin a video and then I go to make it again, I even talk faster than I did the first time. So if you're having trouble following because I'm really rushing, just say, hey, Dr. Evans, please slow down in your videos. No problem. I can do that. I'm, I am trying to keep them under 10 minutes, too, so you don't get totally, um, totally bored. Uh, you'll see what I mean, the Timmy Daydream and... Uh, homework set five. Uh, I think that's a good model for how long people can actually pay attention to these. All right, talk to you soon.